Grace and peace. I am Kimberly Joy, and I thank you for listening to the Kimberly Joy Show. And God, I want to take a moment to thank you. Thank you for simply being God, for being Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Thank you for being the great I am that I am. I thank you for this day, for this broadcast, and for everyone who is listening right now. Lord, I pray that as they listen to this message you have given me to share with them, I pray, God, that they will learn to cast all their cares upon you and to not only cast all their cares upon you, but leave them there, God. Don't pick them back up, God, but trust that you have their back. Trust that you have everything under control. Lord God, I thank you for giving them peace right now. Lord God, for for reigniting the joy in their lives right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. K-Joy Productions presents the stage play, Dear God, on Saturday, October 8th at 5 p.m. Doors open at 4.30 at Power and Faith Ministries. Address is 8120 Hamilton Avenue in Mount Healthy, Ohio, 45231 in the Hilltop Plaza. Tickets are $15 in advance and $20 at the door. You may pay for tickets via Cash App, dollar sign The Kimberly Joyce Show, or PayPal.me slash The Kimberly Joyce Show, or you may call 513-417-0097. Again, 513-417-0097. Now, if you would prefer to view the play online, please go to eventbrite.com and search for Dear God. And that price is only $15 and it will be available for at least 48 hours from the time it goes live. Just to give you a synopsis of Dear God. In this brilliant sequel to Kimberly Joy's stage play, I'm Not My Mama, we get a closer look into the life of Terry Stevens. Now divorced, she is trying to navigate through her new normal while struggling to co-parent with her ex-husband Vincent. Once a model student, their 14-year-old son, Caleb, is now showing signs of rebellion. Vincent is doing everything in his power to be there for, for their son, but a seemingly bitter Terry isn't making it easy. The constant battle between these two leads them down a road neither of them ever imagined. Will they have time to turn around or will it be too late? Dear God is a faith-based story for the entire family and a reminder of the sovereignty of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 20, Jesus said, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will, bu- you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Who were the scribes and Pharisees? Well, the scribes were men who studied the law. They transcribed the law. They they wrote commentaries on the law. They taught the law. But there was one problem. The scribes added their own man-made traditions to the law. Scribes were often associated with the Pharisees, although all Pharisees weren't necessarily scribes. Now, who were the Pharisees? Well, they were a highly respected religious and political Jewish group. Like scribes, they seem to think that their man-made traditions were more important than the law, the law that was given by God. The scribes and Pharisees were more concerned about appearing right than actually being right. Then Jesus said in verse 21, you have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. And that is true because if we were to look back in Exodus 20 and 13, it says thou shalt not kill, which is the fifth commandment of the 10 commandments God gave to Moses to give to the Israelites. Now, what does it mean to kill huh, or to murder? It means to unlawfully take someone's life. Now, when you unlawfully take someone's life, that means that there are consequences, huh? Huh? That means that, that there may be prison time, huh? That, that you may even suffer the death penalty. But in the New Testament, Jesus took it a step further. He said, but I say, he said in verse 22 of Matthew chapter 5, but I say, if you are even angry with someone, 
You are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So just by being angry, you can be judged. Just by cursing someone, you can wind up in hell. 1 John 3 and 15 says, Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. In other words, in God's eyes, murder is more than just physically taking someone's life. Rather, it is any thought or feeling of deep-seated hatred or malice against another person. Think about this. The Bible commands us to love, right? Because God is love. So if we have hatred in our hearts, then we're not pleasing God. Plus, God knows that everything begins in the heart. If it's in your heart, that means you think about it. That means you dwell on it. How many of you know that thoughts eventually become actions? Yes. Every unlawful killing was a thought first. Even if the killer didn't plan to kill the person they killed, they thought about hurting somebody, anybody. Have you ever said to yourself, the next person who says something to me, I am, I'm going off. Or have you ever snapped at someone when they really didn't deserve it? You know why that happened? Because you were angry. And instead of dealing with that anger and surrendering it to God, you held it in your heart until you exploded on, the, on an innocent bystander. People hurt other people every day out of anger. And you don't have to physically hurt someone to commit murder. Oh, no. You can kill someone mentally, uh, emotionally, by your words, by how you treat them. Suicide, unfortunately, is, 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 is on the rise. People who commit suicide do so because they have already been mentally and emotionally murdered. Think about that. And maybe that applies to you. Maybe you're ready to give up. Maybe you're ready to throw in the towel. Maybe you think life would be better if you weren't here, if you were dead. No, that's not the answer. First Peter 5 and 7 tells us to cast all our cares on the Lord. Why? Because he cares about us. God cares about you. Yes, I'm talking to you. I don't care what anyone told you. Even if it was your own family. God loves you. Huh? He created you. And he has a purpose for you. So whatever pain you might be going through. Because again, 1 Peter tells us to cast all our cares on the Lord. Cares can be worries, stress, hurt, disappointment, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness. God says, give that to me. Surrender it to me and be healed. I want to thank you. For listening to today's broadcast. Now if you're ready. To accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And cast all your cares on him. Please pray this prayer. Dear Jesus. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were buried. And I believe you rose again from my liberty. Jesus please forgive me for my sins. Come into my life. Huh, and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you Lord I am now saved. Now I encourage you to attend the Good Bible Believing Church. You are welcome to visit us, Power and Faith Ministries with Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Banks. We are at 8120 Hamilton Avenue in Mount Healthy, Ohio, 45231 in the Hilltop Plaza. Sunday service, 10 a.m. Wednesday Bible study, 7 p.m. To contact me, please email the Kimberly Joy Show at gmail.com or call. 513-417-0097. You may follow the Kimberly Joy Show on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You may donate to the Kimberly Joy Show on Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal. And now here is Darwin Hobbs singing, Cast All Your Cares. 